Game number one, Infernal Shrines, the final match in Group A of the Nations Cup qualifier for Europe, everybody. We got Austria against Hungary. So the group has technically already been decided. We have in first place the Germans, in uh, second place the team from the Netherlands. But we still play out the entire group because it can become important later on. So there's always a chance that one of the teams has to drop out, that there might be some issues that they have attending the offline event or whatnot. And and then we might end up in a situation where we have to determine the best third team out of all of the groups. And in that case, obviously, seeding really matters. So we're still playing out the final match here. And we have now Austria going up against Hungary. Both of these teams have so far not won a single map. So Germany and the Netherlands, they breezed through the group. Obviously, as I explained before, we have in this first stage of the European qualifier. 16 teams, 16 countries that are represented. Therefore, there's a big skill gap between a lot of the teams. Obviously, we seeded the groups, meaning that we made sure that, let's say, France and Germany are not in the same group as Sweden all of a sudden. You want to make sure that you are spreading the top teams out a little bit so that they meet later on in the tournament and don't eliminate each other in the first round. But with that said, we'll figure out which one of the two teams here is now going to be successful and takes third place in this one. Now, if you haven't missed, if you've missed it, there is going to be an offline event later on in June at the 10th and 11th of June in Berlin. So if you want to check that out, if you want to attend that, entrance is free. We are at the Experian at the Alexanderplatz, so the Experian Saturn. Super happy to work with the venue. Venue is absolutely amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. It's also perfectly located. It's super, super central. So if you want to have more information around that, around either the venue or also the tournament details, and you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can just jump down into the description and have a look there. Details are provided with multiple links. There's also crowdfunding, by the way. We hosted events in Miami last year, and for especially the offline tournaments, we of course need some support, since as you can imagine, they are a lot, a lot more expensive to host than online tournaments. So support is definitely welcome. So if you want to check that out, the crowdfunding is also linked in the description. But we now head into Infernal Shrines, our first map. We got Tychus and Falstad locked in. So with Gregorius and Tychus, we already have one transformation for them with Odin available. Get Blaze for a little more control here too. And over on the left side, Hogga and Anubarak. One thing that I want to talk about too is, I already mentioned that I was at the wedding of a friend the last weekend. I had never before drank Jack Daniels honey. I didn't even know that it existed. Jackie was never really my thing. I mean, a Jack and Coke every now and then was kind of fine, but I was more so in the rum department. And even there, they now have all of these extra spices that I wasn't really aware of. I knew them from like a lot of the vodkas that I was drinking, but I didn't know that they had that stuff. And I gotta say that the neat Jack Daniels honey is pretty good. I'm pretty sure there are other brands, maybe also a little more higher up brands that are much better, but I gotta admit, Kind of interesting. Definitely looking into the rum brands that are doing the same thing right now. So that surprised me a little bit. Definitely missed that one. Um, yeah, just a little bit of a side tangent there. But either way. Now we got Anduin. And uh, yeah, Slovaks can drink. Just a little bit of a side thing here. So it uh, was very, very fun. When the, the, the Germans and the Slovaks started drinking, it was a good day. So we got Anduin and we got Vala. We have with that. I mean, I love Vala. It's actually shocking to me that we haven't seen more Vala plays. We had one in this group, so very happy to see her here. A second transformation also kicking in for uh, Hungarians now as they are going for Alexstrasza here. So we got Dragon Queen and Odin that they can go for. Milaiki. And of course, our final pick here for Musteka. Well, let's go and see what he's going to get. They need a bit more damage. Austria against Hungary, everybody. Here we go. We got on the left side now Rega and Mephisto, the final two picks for the Austrians. So at the end of the draft, there was a bit of a misunderstanding, and we can go over that in a moment. But before, let me introduce the players here a little quickly. We have Fropsy on Anubarak, Edelkris for the Austrians playing Vala, Samu on Hoga, Musteka on Mephisto, and Grasor on Rega. To the right side of the map, it's Wolfie on Alex Straza for the Hungarians. We got Double M on Murden, Gregorius on Tychus, Holasta on Falstad, and Grindon is playing Blaze. 
So as you saw during the draft, they missed a ban and the players were still communicating in chat. And again, this is pretty much a friendly match right here. The Hungarians in particular, in my opinion, deserve a bit of a fair play award. They've been just here to party. They've been here to have some fun. They knew that they would be outclassed by their opponents, but they are still enjoying every moment of it. So they've been very cool to work with and yeah, always ready for anything. And they immediately said like, hey guys, you missed your ban. Not a problem, what did you want to ban? And then Anduin was called. And there was a bit of confusion on the side of the Austrian team. So uh, that's why towards the end there, Anduin was swapped over into Rega. And we have as their final damage dealer, Mephisto. So as the draft was about to end, people were just clarifying all of that and that's why they cancelled the draft and then just picked the heroes and, uh, and went for it. So the draft still counts but we just needed to make sure that we adjust for the changes or the compromises that were talked about in uh, the team chat as we were going for it. So we have a little bit of a trap set up here. Vala is going for stacks. So we don't see a multi-shot build but instead Edelcross is trying to get some auto attack damage in. Keep in mind that both of these teams have not won a single map yet. So both the Austrians and the Hungarians had real trouble going up against Germany and the Netherlands, yeah, who dominated the group. And now we are going to see which of these teams is going to break this a little bit, or if this might even go towards a third map. But already, Bala trying to stack it. They're going for camps, and they've even stolen away the camp on the side of the Hungarian team. So it's a bit of an annoying development, and the red team is trying to respond by moving down to the bottom of the map, and these boys are a little bit late. So uh, here it is. Quick hit coming in already, a swap, and with a four versus four, there's a chance for both of them to not only win the team fight, but also take the camp. Talking about taking the camp, seems like another steal is happening at the top right. So they're trying to outplay them a bit by stealing the camps away and getting already an early lead thanks to the extra experience and pressure that they can build up with that. Now stacks are coming in for Vala, as mentioned, she's now sitting at 34. The top camp has been stolen, so good times for Hogger. And they're breaking through the bottom wall as well. The Austrian team, yeah, they are doing a decent job here. Trying to get ahead. And, well, obviously up at the top, Grindon still in the one-on-one -on -one against Samu. Down here, Anubarak leading the charge at the front. The Austrian is relying on their strong leader over here, as we have <laughs> the red team in some real trouble. Uh, Alex Strasser is doing her best to make sure that they are all going to be healed up, but using the Dragon Queen this early is of course also a heavy commitment, considering that the shrine is just now about to get active. So that's a bit of a problem. Another camp about to be taken, and on the macro level, the Austrians are just looking way better. Their players are also more experienced, there's absolutely no doubt about that. So they're doing what they can here. And well, as you can see, it's still Hogger who's trying to get a few stacks together for them. But the blue team is now starting to commit. And if they can get a kill, I mean, even if they can't and just get level 7, that will already help them a lot. The hits come in again, and they are about to go for kill number one. And there it is. Blaze is dead. And at the same time, we now also have 60 stacks for Vala, who so far hasn't died and lose any of her gambit stacks so yeah things are looking fairly decent here they're already breaking through the mid lane wall too so maybe a little bit greedy at times but it's working for them they have still hogger ping-ponging around the shrine and getting them the uh, the punisher and now that they're taking the wall down this early they will likely be able to take the entire the entire fort that's big actually it's a frozen punisher too so massive attacks are coming and for the Hungarians, it was quite important to get level 7 so that they can fight on uh, an even talent here. The problem is that now Blaze gets murdered by Vala, and now they are playing a 4 versus 5. So the extra talent helps them a little bit, but not enough. And with Falls that falling, that's not only a fort destroyed, but even a chance to drop the wall in the middle. Another aggressive move from the Austrian team as they are massively going for it. Breaking through the side wall. Even more damage. Another jump from the Punisher. Tigers is dead. They're going for Muradin. And he gets also slaughtered. Five kills to zero. The budget Germans on the way through the middle of the map as they're going for an early keep in this game. The Frozen Punisher, of course, making things a lot easier for them as it disables one structure after another. And that's gonna be it for the keep in the middle. Five kills to zero, five minutes into the game. The entire mid lane has been destroyed. Nicely done.
fantastic play here from the blue team, really exploiting the weaknesses on the side of the Hungarians and uh, taking them apart. Now, this is a huge blow against the red team. But it's also important that the Austrians are now trying to play this out a little bit smart. It's very easy when you're this far ahead that you all of a sudden go full Sudoku and you're just committing to every single fight no matter where it is. And then uh, you just lose your team in a battle that you should never have fought in the first place and start to fall behind. So they need to try and avoid that situation. They're closing in on level 10 on the other hand. So yeah, there it is. And with heroic abilities, that's where the party really starts. There's the shockwave, and they come in with the Durance of Hate, which didn't really do a whole lot for them. And Nuburak, by the way, is beetling it up with a Locust Swarm over here. Okay, so no Cocoon from him, and more ping pong plays from Hogger. Couldn't get a kill, though. Haven't gotten a kill. And now with 100 stacks for Vala, she's becoming more and more dangerous, too. It's, of course, going to uh, happen even, especially when she hits level 16. That's the big one, once we get Manticore. And are able to rely on all of that extra attack speed that you hopefully still have, thanks to those Gambit stacks. But yeah, the Gambit bonus is absolutely incredible when you get Manticore. It's fantastic. And with 100 extra stacks that she has, that's a second on the reward. Top side gets pushed out a bit. Still a two-level lead. And obviously, they're totally willing to sacrifice a few of their resources up at the top. Hogger is now rotating between the lanes as a commitment of two of their heroes towards the camp. The problem is it's two of the damage dealers, which means nobody can defend the bot lane properly. So another fort gets destroyed. And their main goal was really to just get to level 10. And they're a little bit too focused on just trying to close these experience gaps, which is obviously important, but they also need to balance their resources out a bit more to ensure that they're not giving up structures for free. Yeah, the stun's not really connecting with Blaze. <laughs> we get the Hinterland Blast, by the way. So, yeah, Hinterland Blast is in. I kind of love the whole cooldown reduction aspect of it. It's a shame that it's not getting played more. We had one game during Meta Madness where Hinterland Blast was lined up on Cursed Hollow multiple times in the choke points and just got reset after reset. It was used three, four times in the same fight. It was just hilarious. Massive win here, by the way, with the Durance of Hate. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's pretty much a five-man wipe. Everybody dead. I don't know if they can go core here, though. That's a very early commitment to core, considering that the death timers are very low. But yeah, that fight was obviously an absolute god-given gift here. Incredibly well played. So here's the move for the core as they're trying to win the game. But as I explained, if you die here, you're going to be in trouble. They're taking the core down low, but can they go all the way? That's the question. 50% right now. Things are looking good so far for them. 30% and yes, nice decision by the Austrian team. A three level advantage, 11 kills to one as Rega dies. So not quite a perfect game, but still an impressive show by the blue team as they take the lead in the series. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Battlefield of Eternity, game number two. So, Hungary against Austria, the Austrians in the lead. Now, just quickly before we're heading into the game, there is a rule that we have implemented at this tournament as well. So, you can only play a hero once in the series, meaning that the 10 heroes that were just played cannot be picked again. Still leaves you with plenty of opportunities. This is not going to be ending up with uh, Murkies and uh, Gazlos being played. I mean, this might still happen in the group stage when you have a top tier team going up against an underdog that is not quite on their level. Players have obviously already shown throughout Group A that they are willing to have some fun here too and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get that in some of the other groups as well but as the tournament continues we're gonna see more and more normal drafts as the yeah the margin of error just becomes smaller and the game has become a lot more competitive especially for the top teams but there's still a nice adjustment so that you don't see the same heroes being played over and over again so right now as we're heading into uh, this second map it's something to keep in mind here the Hungarians, they are a little bit outclassed. Again, they are playing for fun here, and I've already explained that they, in my opinion, would deserve a fairness award. So far, they have been a lot of fun to work with. These guys are always on time. They're always ready for anything. If anybody is delayed, they're like, no worries, we are here, we have time, we'll wait for you, it's okay. So, yeah, but 
when it comes to uh, the level of Heroes of the Storm play, they are trailing a little bit. Still got a team together to represent their country. There's a lot of countries that could not make that happen. Looking at you, Switzerland, <laughs> and a few others. But yeah, I honestly am pretty impressed that we got 16 countries to uh, field a team in the first place. That was pretty big. But yeah, Jimmy gets banned, so here on Battlefield of Eternity we don't get Reyna with the Exterminator, which was already played or at least attempted a few times now. Uh, with that, what else do we have? We have Jojo and Diablo banned, so two of the tanks are gone. But the first pick goes to the red team. Hungarians with, ooh, a commitment to Medivh right at the start. Alright, I'm interested. Keep in mind they played a sim or they had a similar idea when they were playing against the Germans. They were playing around Medivh and it didn't work all that well. They got clearly outdrafted in that particular series and part of that draft was also Jimmy. This time we get Anduin and we have Malgamis. Okay. Mm, alrighty. Could still, of course, see a commitment with Anduin, Light Bomb, and Genji engage. So that is a big option here still. But if you're already going for Medivh, then I'm pretty curious what exactly they're going to combo that off with. Because if you want to go for a Kidnap combo, you could go Stitches. They go for Artanis and for Lucio. Ooh, I have not really been a fan of the Battlefield of Eternity drafts on the Hungarian so far. It's one thing if you are Dainu and you're locking in Artanis because you know that you are on a completely different skill level than the opponent. It's a totally different story if you are the underdog and uh, you are picking Artanis. So I'm not so sure on that one. Uh, it's oftentimes easy to think, hey, amateur opponent, immortal damage. But there's much, much better options here compared to him. Greymane being one of them. I mean, even Liming, if you just want to go for the poke damage from afar. We've seen her played here too. And as of course, others that would also be very solid here. But let's see what they can pull off. Now, Lucio also for quick rotations. But with now Stitches being banned, it seems that they are really going in on tank bans. Since they already have Malganis, they can limit the options a bit further on the other side. Lulnara, Bambi, gets eliminated. But Greymane is still an option. And of course, in the previous series, we've seen Sergeant Hammer being played together with Zarya. So if the Austrians have seen that and they want to emulate the Germans a little bit, like they usually do, then uh, they could do that right now. I mean, these guys talk a little bit funny, but generally speaking, there are some German roots there. So, Hanzo, yeah, Hanzo and Genji. I didn't even think about Hanzo anymore, honestly. Totally slipped my mind here, but they go for both of the Shimada brothers. So we get that light bomb engage that I've been talking about earlier on. But Hanzo on top of that for massive immortal damage and for a couple of sexy stuns if he connects the arrow properly. And they're not going for a meme strike here, which I think is more or less a given. Still need a side laner. Same is also true for the Hungarians. Actually, no, they are going to play Artanis on the side lane. Teriel as the main and Suljin. It's a little bit reminiscent of what was played during Meta Madness when a scuffed team was going up against a Suljin that absolutely crushed them. I still remember that. Alarak, on the other hand, oof, even more aggression from them right now. Alright, so the Cats back then putting a really nice Sulgin game onto the board, but let's see if the Hungarians can emulate that. Battlefield of Eternity, map number two, so let's go boys. We got our f second map in the best of three series here between Austria and Hungary. This could be the last map of Group A. Austria against Hungary. Game number two. Fropsi for the blue team with Malganes. Musteka on Genji. We got Samu on Alarak. Edelkris on Hanzo. And Grazor is playing Anduin. As on the right side of the map, Hungary is playing Wolfie on Artanis. Double M on Lucio. Gregorius on Medivh. Grindon on Suljin. And Holostoa on Tyriel. I kind of hate Musteka a little bit. Because every single time I read his nickname, I'm thinking about uh, Greek food. And then I get hungry. And it's never really a good thing. Then we're talking about pineapple pizza again. Uh, and about all these good things. Which reminds me also, now that I think about it, about the uh, venison goulash that I just had in... Uh, 
in Slovakia in Bratislava when uh, I went to the wedding of a friend and I can tell you I've, I know I've been talking about this in one of the other games in the group but you have no idea what it's like when you're living in a, another country and there are just some base foods that you normally eat that you don't even cross your mind when you're thinking about a typical food from your country but you just don't get it where you live and then you're just so happy when you are back in the region and all of a sudden it's available to you so yeah that venison goulash oh i'm gonna dream of that for another couple of, of weeks for sure but apparently there's also a little bit of a nightmare going on since the hungarians are starting the game with the loss on soldier and the end of teriel the explosion still connects, but he can't get the kill here, so that one's gone. Uh, with that, we have two kills to zero, and camps right away getting attacked. Suljin went into the Bone Slicer on level one, whereas Artanis went for the Protector of Aya. I mean, why would you do that? If you're already playing that bad boy in Battlefield of Eternity, at least go for the amateur opponent. But the stacks on Medivh are not too shabby. I gotta give it to Medivh. Even in the game against the Germans, he completed the quest in a reasonable time frame. So the Medivh player is definitely not playing that hero for the first time. I can tell you that much. So off we go. 15 stacks right from the start. Suljin trying to slice it up a little bit. Not the build that I expected, but whatever works for them. The pressure is already on from the get-go though. Now, the Austrians, they want to make sure that they are closing this one out with the 2-0, of course. They now have on level 1 the redemption for Hanzo. I don't think that Hanzo deserves any redemption, to be honest with you. That guy has been annoying for years. So, no. And he's also... I mean, he is just an absolute soul boy. You know if he goes to Starbucks, but he's gonna order. <laughs> Actually, I'm always making fun of him with his stupid hits, but up yet. And I make fun of him going to a Starbucks and ordering his soy latte or whatever. But then I'm looking at Anduin and I'm thinking about what would Anduin order? What does Anduin order when he goes to a coffee shop? Tea? He's definitely, he's, he's definitely a tea drinker. There is just no way that that guy even takes something that is remotely as strong as a coffee. Yeah, Anduin is total weak sauce. So he's definitely a tea drinker. Or he orders a warm water or something. I would actually not be surprised if Anduin uh, would, be, would be British. That would totally be in line with his character. I mean, 100%. So yeah, maybe it's warm water, warm milk, or it's tea. <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> Can't be anything else. With that baby face, there's just no other explanation. But all right. Just away from Anduin for just, a, uh, for just a second. Maybe he's going for the spiced latte as well. Who knows? The seasonal latte with uh, the oatmeal milk <laughs> whatever it is he is still pretty strong as a character in heroes of the storm i mean his pullout game is absolutely on a different level and i'm pretty sure he's going to be able to showcase this in this game in particular especially when he gets his level 16 and gets the double pull but now that Suljin is again getting targeted, that's a very nice and easy way for the Austrians to shut down the stacking process of the main damage dealer of the Hungarian team. And oh, they're not stopping there. They go for Tanis, they go for Lucio, and they take Teriel down. Everybody dead with the exception of Medivh, who's still sitting here trying to get his stacks together. We all know that Medivh players are only allowed to feed once that they have completed their quest. So he's just sitting there like, guys, I would love to die with you. I would love to give my life for the cause, but it's not a thing. Now the Austrians, they are really emulating the German efficiency right now. I mean, look at that. Seven kills, two, zero, and 100% shield on the Immortal. They're going for the top lane for some serious damage, and that could be a forward considering how this is going so far. With a bit more aggression around the top, they might just be able to pull it off. Especially considering that they can also dive a bit into that back line and try and threaten them even further if they can push them away from the fort. That's definitely in the cards. And of course, there's also the talent advantage that they're currently rocking here, which is another big advantage for them. Yeah, shots are being fired already. They're making their plays up at the top. Another hit coming. Gregorius is a little bit low. 28 stacks for him. Still needs to make sure that he doesn't die here. Shield is being used on Tyriel though. But the wall is gone. The shield as well. But it seems that the fort is not going to make it. They're diving in. 
portals are being provided for the escape. Mustika attack, but he comes in for the kill with the swift strike, gets the reset. Tyrael is down, so is the fort. Eight kills to zero and a one half level lead as more heroes are about to die. Lucio is also dead and the punishment continues. The Austrians doing a work in game number two in the third match of Group A of the Nations Cup here. Yeah, level seven talents are picked, being picked. We got the Arcanite access. The swap attempts are there. They're just not successful enough, but they're following it up with an immediate portal. The problem is that we have the sleeper set up for Malganis, which immediately stops them cold in their tracks. And now the no, no, Medivh, no. Oh, he had way too many stacks to die in this situation. Medivh is gone and all the stacks with him. They are still breaking through the top. And they're waiting for level 10. 10 kills to uh, zero. Ah, oh, that hurt. That hurt. He was so close completing the quest again, but it didn't quite work. Oh, and here's the kill against Genji. So they're already denying the perfect game. Genji is gone, and now they're trying to flank in with another portal attempt. The swap is there. Making a move for Malganis. And he's, he's gonna die. Yes, there it is. The second kill. The Hungarians coming in with some nice pressure, trying to close the experience gap. Because now we finally have level 10 for the Austrian team. But it was just not in time to help them take that battle. There is, of course, still the advantage that will continue throughout the objective, or at least the initial phase of the objective. This is something that they're going to have access to for sure. So at this point already we have a little uh, bit of a play being made all the way up here at the top for the camp. Both of the teams are trying to get their their shamans over on the right side. The same thing currently playing out. Yeah, heroic abilities are about to pop up for the red team but they have to give up the halftime show. They won't be able to do anything here. So that's a good start for the Austrians into objective number two, especially with Hanzo. Not gonna have any problems there. Medivh is trying to stack it up again, only relying on a single stack up to this point. We have 11 for Suljin and only 8 on the Arcanite Axis, so not really getting a lot of damage out yet. Will be hard for him, not gonna lie. Will be pretty hard, pretty difficult to make this work. Artanis is going for the laser. Yeah, and there's already the ping, and they can't decide who to go for, apparently. Anduin and Genji on the menu, and they're deciding in favor of Anduin for just a second. The light bomb, the X strike, and they go for the big damage right here. The laser is out, Medivh is dead, Anduin on the run, but now Atanas has fallen. They killed Tyrael as well. And this is 13 kills to 2 now in favor of the Austrians. We have them on an absolute tear over here. So, yeah, 15 stacks for Suljin on the baseline and 15 for the Arcanine Axis. But it doesn't really seem that the Hungarians have an answer to what's happening here. So, I don't really... I mean, what do you think? Do you guys think that the Austrians are going to give up on this one? Uh, especially on this objective? Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. I was pretty sure they would still continue and try to lock this one down with another 100% on the shield and that's exactly what they did, so here we are. We have half a level to 13, so this is going to be a brutal push. The wall at the bottom of the map is already gone. We have a huge shield on the Immortal. We're now 9 minutes into the game. Oh, and they can get the kill. The Light Bomb was perfect. Made sure that he couldn't use his ult. No chance for Suljin to drop the Taz Dingo. And there, this is going to hurt. Not only is it going to drop the fort, it very likely will also damage the keep at the bottom of the map. Especially if they can lock in a couple of additional kills and it's looking very, very much that way. There is at least the ley line to delay things a little bit, but Wolf is in trouble. He gets another shield just as Genji is driving in deep to attempt and get a reset. Dodges out on most of the damage, so Musteka is really doing work here. Laser on Atanas is out, but easily dodged. The fort is already gone and they're all trying to retreat here. Falling behind the gate, but they are definitely having a tough time. Now, there's always the threat of another portal coming in, but just look at the moves being made for Tyriel, who dies again. Tyriel is down. 
the gate about to fall, then they have full vision of what's going on on the other side and can coordinate their attacks a lot better. We have 145 stacks on Atanas' sadism. Another kill as Medivh is dead, and here comes the light bomb engaged with the double stun. A quick X try to follow up on it. It's the end of Lucio. The entire team has wiped off the map. Full five man team wipe. But Anduin still dies to the keep. <laughs> Anduin down, but they're still hoping to end the game here. We're 10 minutes in, and since everybody is dead, this should be an easy exercise for the team in blue. They still got the Immortal doing work, and this is a game. A 2-0 victory for the Austrians as they take third place in Group A of the European Nations Cup qualifier. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.